All right, guys, uh, we're going to finish hopefully today's uh, awardic topics. We talk a lot about awarta. I think should be hopefully these the last lectures uh, about uh, Shivar. And the reason why I'm talking about it because it is very common in, in this area because fever is not very well uh, easy to, to, uh, to get it here in the Gulf area uh, or Middle East. So I think Shiva is still a reasonable you know, solution for short neck. Uh, but I'll give you a lot of tips and tricks how we can get a good outcome because not everyone do a Shiva to get a good result. And we're going to see why is that. Um, so let's go ahead and start. Sorry. We know fixation is the most important. The reason why it's very important to have a good neck for fixation. The most EVAR failures come from the neck. So fixation is the most important uh, in achieving a good outcome in the EVAR. This is very nice uh, meta-analysis done by Dr. Antonio. He looked at the seven, seven major study in the EVAR and he found that he compared hostile neck versus a normal neck, like with an eye view and without eye view. And he found that if you're dealing with a hostile neck, this will really increase your type one endolic about 4.5 and even increase aneurysm rated mortality about nine times. Another also paper by Spatial, he looked at the influence of multiple hostile neck parameter on the outcome. And he found that if you stuck to the eye view, your interoptive endolic is less than 1% and all cause mortality 1%. But if you have two hostile neck parameter, then interactive indole go to about 6.7% and all cause mortality go to 13%. And if you have more than hostile neck parameters, then your interactive indole go to 16.7. You see a substantial increase in the indole and all cause mortality. So what he concludes that if you have more than hostile neck parameter, this substantial will increase your mortality, major adverse event, interactive indole and adjuvant procedures. The reason why, as I mentioned before, all my lectures that if you guys, you want to go out of eye view, don't go more than one hostile parameters. If you have two hostile parameters, then you get into trouble. I mean, it's better to stay with an eye view, but for some reason, if you have to go to out of eye view because patient cannot do a surgery, is a high risk for surgery, then don't go more one hostile neck parameter out of eye view. So what do we do if we have a short neck? Where we have, we, we talk about short neck and ceiling zone. So what we have, we have a short neck and short ceiling zone, like three millimeter neck and ceiling zone five millimeter. As we said before, this is cannot fit with any EVAR. Then we have to go above the renal and get to the healthy uh, neck. So we need to get to the healthy neck by extending our landing zone to above the renals. And then what our solution is, we have to do a shivar or we have to do a fever. So how we decide which one to go? Of course, FIVAR is a custom made, is a consolidated technology. It's been doing now for many years. We have an excellent outcome, and this is, should be your first choice. But the problem with uh, with the FIVAR, it need more accurate planning, need a lot of experience, and in in the Gulf area, it takes a long time to order it and get it here. So it's not good for emergency or urgent cases or patient with expanding aneurysm or symptomatic aneurysm. Where shiva is off the shelf, is good for emergency. It's a cheaper and technically easier. But of course, the problem with the shivar is the cutter leaks. We're going to talk about it and the graft in conflict if you use like three or four shivar, especially if you have a narrow aorta. This is very nice meta-analysis. Also, they compare nine study, nine fever cohort study with the eight shivar cohort study. And they look a lot of things. They look at the operative outcome, uh, post-operative, 30 days mortality, or cause mortality, patency rate. And they really didn't find any major difference between both techniques. So what they conclude is that FIVA and SHIVA both are effective treatment for juxtarina aortic aneurysm, but they still think that FIVA should be the priority treatment for juxtarina aortic aneurysm because it's go more stable, give you more, uh, give it, it extend your really uh, uh, your uh, <coughs> neck to the proximal without compromising you know uh, your landing zone. Uh, where shivar is mainly for the complex anatomy, which is out of IFU for for fever on urgent cases or emergency cases. So, so when we look at all study, when they say there's no big difference between fever and shivar, why we still a lot of people they don't believe in shivar? A lot of people they think it doesn't work, and the reason for that four reasons. First, we don't have standardization of the device combination and gutter endolic classifications. 
You see, so we done, everyone used different combination of the craft and the chimneys. And the gutter leak, everyone got gutter leak the same. Gutter leaks are not the same. They are special classification of gutter leak and everyone has to treat differently. So we're going to talk about that. Uh, some people, they use bare stents, some people use cover stents. So they mix all the data. So the reason why we have a different outcome. Uh, they may, if you look at all the studies, they mix also elective with a rupture cases in chimney group. And the last thing is 85 of the patients with the shivar are the cases who have difficult anatomy who are out of IFU for fever. So we are already dealing with a difficult anatomy which is out of IFU for fever. So this is really the reason why most people don't get a good outcome with the uh, Shiva. So this is, so how we can get a durable outcome. And this is the reason why from my lectures, I'm gonna give you at least, I think nine or 10 steps. If you follow it, hopefully you get a good result with the Shiva. First one, you have to use a device with a flexible endoskeleton. This is came from Berkeley's registry. They found that if you use an etanol endoskeleton, you have less uh, endo, uh, uh, gutters leak than if you have a stainless steel. So the device, a combination of the uh, chimney with the endoskeleton type of the device it, it uses, it make a huge difference. So you cannot tell me this two patients will have the same outcome. This one going to have a very bad outcome, a good outcome. So if you decide to use a chimney, try to use a device with a net, uh, netinol uh, endoskeleton. Second thing, you need to use a chimney graph with the radial forces. And this also came from Berkeley's registry. And they found that if you use a balloon expandable cover stent, you have a better twofold reduction in the type one indo leak than if you have a self uh, cover uh, uh, self expandable cover stent. When we start chimney a long time ago, we used to use a self expandable cover stent, but now all of us we shift to the balloon expandable cover stent. And this is from Berkeley's registry where they found this decrease your type one A indo leak when you use a balloon cover uh, balloon expandable cover stent. So this is also very important. Third thing, you have to use the right combination of the EVAR with a balloon expandable cover stent. Not all combinations are the same. This is very nice study, but in vitro. And they found the best combination if you use excluder with a V12 barrel graft. And this is also confirmed with uh, called a Protogoras study, where they use a Metronic with a V12 or called a radiant, you know, cover stent. And they found you get the best combination and the least. Uh, uh, endoleak. Uh, the same if you use like BBX with the gore, you know. So you have to use the right combination of the cover stent and the EVAR to get the best outcome. So from this study, even they are dealing with the neck all 4.5 millimeters, so it's very short neck, you know. Look at that, technical success 100%, nuance type 1 endoleak only one less than 2%, 1A endoleak. And latency of the chimney was about 95%, and the sag regression about 60 or 70%, which is very important, sag regression. And the freedom from chimney graph rated intervention was 93%. So it's excellent outcome for chimney when you use the right combinations. Why, why we talk about sag regression? This is a very important topic. I just want to mention here very quick as out from our subject, that when you do an EVAR, it is not acceptable anymore to say the SAC is a stable, I'm doing fine. You have to see the SAC regressed. Before we said if the SAC is stable or regressed, we are fine. If it expands, it's a bad sign. These days, even stable SAC, many studies showed is not good. Uh, it's increased your everything, endoleak, aneurysmatic complications. And this study, it's a huge study, 17,000 is meta-analysis done recently 2022. And they compare patient who has a stable sac coming with a shrink sac. And they found if you have your sac shrink after the EVAR, this will decrease all cause mortality, aneurysm rated mortality, aneurysm rupture, second intervention, endoleak, aneurysm rated complications. So again, it's very important after your repair to see the sac regress. And we saw that when you do uh, SHIVAR uh, in the last study. Number four. You have to follow the IFU. Even Shiva has an IFU. How is Ivar has an IFU? Fever has an IFU. Also, Shiva has an I, uh, IFU. This is IFU. It's very important to follow the IFU. First one, the neck. You still need two millimeter neck. You cannot do it if it's not two millimeter inferior neck. And the new neck should be at least 15. Even some people, they say 20 millimeter. The longer new neck would be better outcome. The neck diameter should be between 19 to 30 because the largest Ivar we have 36. 
and try to stuck to one or two chimney. The more you go more than two chimney, you get to trouble. The neck angulation also, you have to stuck that. The infrarenal neck angulation should be less than 60, suprarenal angulation less than 45, and suprarenal angulation less than 45. And again, the renal angulation should be less than 90. So we can, as we said here, we need two millimeter neck, but the new neck should be 15 and 20. What is the new neck? It depends. If the two renal is not at the same level, then you measure the distance between the higher renal and the neck. If you have 15 millimeters, they need only one chimney. If less than 15 millimeters, then you have to go higher to the SMA. Then the SMA has to be more than, the distance between SMA and the neck should be less, more than 15 millimeters. If the distance between SMA and the neck here, less than 15, then you may have to go higher. You know, you may have to go to the celiac. So the whole idea is that the new neck, you're going to get the healthy neck, it should be at least 15 to 20 uh, millimeters. And again, uh, either you do one or two chimney, it depends where the level of the renal artery. But whatever you want to use, always you need the new neck to be 15 to 20. So how do you decide to go one or two chimney? You measure from the neck here and you go 15 millimeter and you see where you are self, where yourself. If you are still below the renal, then one chimney. If you're already above the renal, then you have to use two chimney and go all the way to the SMA. We talk about angulation. This is how to measure the angulation. The suprarenal is less than 40, suprarenal um, less than 45, and infrarenal less than 60. And this is how you calculate the, uh, the angulations uh, on the 3D CT scan. Uh, the, again, the renal angulation should be less than 90, because otherwise you get a kink in the chimneys and will not work. And this is how to calculate it. Okay, so this is number five. This is the number five rules. You need to oversize, and the oversize should be at least 30%. If less than 20%, not acceptable. If you have all one chimney, you can go 25% is acceptable. But if you do two chimney, at least you need 30%. Don't go oversize too much, like 40%, you end with the infolding. The other way to measure it, you measure the chimney diameters and you, the stent, you put them there. Like you're going to put like, measure like two or three, seven, six, like two renal six, six, SMA seven. You you add them, you divide them by two and you measure it, add them to the diameter of the aorta and you get the diameter of the EVAR you need to use. This is another way to do it, to call it as chips. Or you can go just oversize 30%, you'll be fine. Number six, which is the most important, is the technique. How you deliver the the shiva. We have about five or six steps. How we do it? First, you start from the femoral, I get femoral axis and brachial axis, or something you get axillary axis, it depends how is the size of the artery. Uh, but if the brachial is small, I go to axillary, as a, uh, and then you need the femoral axis. Then from the brachial or axillary axis, you go, you target the renal arteries, and you put a rosin wire. It's the best wire to use, and this is a rosin wire. Then you advance a long sheet, seven millimeter, seven French, nine centimeter, all the way inside the target vessels, which is the renal arteries. And then after you put the sheet, then you advance the cover stent all the way inside the sheets, inside the target vessel, and then you stop. But at least you are sure now you are inside target vessel, you have your sheets and you cover stent inside the target vessels. Again, we go from the left auxiliary or breaker artery, um, we don't like to go from the right because this way you don't have to cross the uh, carotid artery and cause a stroke. If you use one renal, we, know, we like to use only one sheet seven. If you use two renal, as I use two sheet, or you can, or you can use 16 French big sheet and inside you put two seven French, one for right and one for left renal. And most of in this situation, you have to go to auxiliary artery. All right, so after you put your sheath and you put your frozen wire, you have your sheath, you have your cover stent inside the renals. Then you start now from below. You, then you stop and just start from below. Then you just go and deploy it as a EVAR, the way the normal deployment. You deploy two or three, you go to the level where you're going to deploy it. You deploy it the ipsilateral, you know, uh, limb, and you remove all the delivery system. Okay? After that, after you do that, then you start deploying your chimneys. The balloon expandable has to be at least two centimeters inside the target vessels. 
And usually I use the same size. You know, if you use self-expandable, I use one millimeter bigger, but if you're below expandable, I use the same size already. I don't go one millimeter bigger. And usually you need five because you need two centimeters here. And usually you need two, the new neck about two centimeters and need a bit above the fabric. So usually you're going to end with about five centimeter lengths of the cover stent. And the most important, the chimney has to end above the fabric of the EVA. If you're below, then the EVA will occlude the chimney. And don't go also too high. You just need to go above the fabric a little bit to be sure that stand above it. Like that. And before you deploy it, the most important, don't forget to pull the sheath because she's all the way inside. You need to pull the sheath. And the most important, when you pull the sheath, you have to put the tip of the sheath below the anchors because remember you are behind the EVA and the EVA has an anchors and has, uh, so the anchors, it can puncture or rupture the balloon and then you cannot deploy your cover stent. So what you need is that you want to be sure your cover stent, your, your sheath is under the anchor. So protect the balloon from the anchors. And then you go and deploy your balloon, the boss, uh, renal arteries, the cover stent, the balloon expander cover stent. Okay. So again, before deploying, don't forget to withdraw it. But when you withdraw it, always leave the sheath below the subarenal anchors pins. It's very important. And after you deploy it, don't forget, you need to put your sheath back. You're doing what we call a telescope technique. When you deflate the balloon, you push the sheath all the way inside. Why is that? Because you don't know. You make a dissection, you make it an occlusion in the, in, the, in the graph. So you want your sheath to be in. Because if your sheath is not in, you know where you can get inside again. Then you lose your access. And if you have any issue with the renal artery, dissection, occlusion, spasm, you cannot deal with it. So the most important, after you deploy your cover stent, when you start deflating the balloon, you push your sheath inside, all the way inside the renal artery. We call the telescope technique to be sure your sheath inside the renal artery. If any issue, you already have access in the both renal artery. <clears throat> then after you deployment, and then you do deploy the contractor limb of the EVAR after you finish everything, now you go to remodeling, which is a kissing balloon. You put a reliant balloon inside the EVAR, and you, you put the, and then you inflate, you pull the sheath back again, and you inflate the balloon inside the balloon uh, cover stent by doing a kissing uh, technique. After you finish, don't pull just the balloon like that. You have to insert the balloon inside the sheath because the balloon can be captured again with the hooks and then you cannot pull it out. So again, after you deflate the balloon, pull the sheath to insert the balloon inside the sheath before you pull it out. So if you pull up the, the balloon without the sheath protecting the balloon from the anchor, the anchor can capture the balloon and you're stuck and you cannot pull it out. So it's very important. And you can see here, an excellent deployment is above the fabric and under the anchors. This is the best place to place your uh, shivar. Um, I just want to mention this very quick. It's not the light of our talk today, but if you're going to do for TVAR, uh, for thoracobdoma aneurysm, you can still do a chimney. Uh, I'll just give you a very quick uh, review of the technique here. Uh, the type R should be one or two. If you have three, it's very hard. You have to have both subcave RT open because you go from both sides. And you need at least the length more than 15 millimeters. And diameter should be less than 40 because the largest T VAR is 46. So, what you do first, you go and you blow your T VAR. You may one or two, the most important, you're going to end above the celiac about one or two centimeters. So you may need one or two, it depends how long is the thoracic aorta. And after that, you go, you go from two from the left brachial and one from the right brachial, and you can urate celiac SMA and one of the renals. And then from below, you go and can urate the other renals artery. Then the same what we do with the EVAR, you put your long sheath, you put your cover stent all the way inside, and then you go and you put a, a, an EVAR, you deploy the EVAR. The EVAR should be at least, a little bit below the renal arteries, and you deploy and should be smaller than the size of the EVAR, TVAR. The size of the EVAR should be smaller than the uh, TVAR. And after that, you put interposition stent graph between both of them, and finally, you deployed everything, all the cover stent, 
and then you do remodeling the same what we did with Zajac Serenals. It's more complicated, but it can be done in a high risk patient if you don't have a fever or fever available. And this is how they look at when you end. Uh, you can see here, there's two stent and you can see the chimney is trapped between the two stent. All right, so we, we talk about technique. It's very important to do the right techniques. Rule number seven, you need to reduce the chimney craft type one indolic. How we can reduce that? By lengthening the chimney. So you don't want the chimney to go like 90 degree. The longer the chimney go behind the graft, less chance of type one indolic. So it's called a spiraling. You put it like in spiral uh, positions. Uh, you will have the longer proximal landing zone will be better, less than of uh, indolic. So in juxtarenal, the new landing zone should be at least 15 to 20 millimeters. If you're talking about uh, trochoabdominal, then the landing zone or the, the overlap between the long spandle cover stent and the T-var should be at least five centimeters. So for trochoabdominal, you need landing zone uh, overlap between the T-var and the chimney, five centimeter. For juxtarenal, you need at least 15 to two to 20 millimeter between the EVAR and the uh, renal chimneys. Of course, you write sandwich technique and use the right combination of EVAR and cover stent. Number nine, and this is the most important to know what kind of uh, catalytic you are dealing with, you know? So when you finish your case and you do an angiogram and you see an endoleak, say, oh, I have endoleak. So you have to know what type of endoleak to see how you treat it because not all endoleak is the same. This is why we have a classification. We used to have only one classification called Divaris. Now we have called uh, Donuts classifications. I'm going to talk about it, and I think it's very important. I think Divaris is very important classification. It classified type of endoleak to the type A, B, and C. And A divided to the A1, A1, A2, and A3. What is that? A1, that means you have a leak coming around the chimney all the way going to the sack and going to the branch. This is not good. This needs to be treated. This is not good. This is because this brushalized uh, sac. So this type of endoleak is dangerous. We have to be treated. This is type A2. It go from above, start from above, but end in the uh, in the branch cover, in the branch, in the renal. It doesn't go down the sac. This is intermittent. It's not bad because it doesn't go to the sac, but the blood go down around the chimney to the renal. A3, it's just go inside, again, go from above, but go doesn't go anywhere. Doesn't go to the sack, doesn't go to the branch. So this is very benign. Don't worry about this one. This will seal. The moment you reverse the hip rain, this will seal. So this is benign, this is intermittent, this is dangerous. So the reason why it is different. Now go to type B. Type B also, they divide to type, B, type B1 and B2. B1, that means the blood coming from around from the branch, from the renal, going down to the sac. This is also is not good. You have, may have to extend it more to get a good seal because this pressurizes the sac. Whereas B2 is come from the branch, but go nowhere. So this is benign, you can just watch it. And then we have C called type C, which is, is just between, you don't know where it's come, but just you see between the chimney and the EVAR, but doesn't go to the branch, doesn't go down. This is very benign, you just watch it, it will go away by itself. So this is how we look, how we classify them. I already talk about them. And this is how we decide to treat them or not to treat them. This is all the classification. They used to call pattern A, B, and C. A, if you have oversized, B, if you undersized, and C, if you don't have good enough landing zone. So if you have oversized, like use a 40%, then you get an indolic because of the folding of the stent graft. And really it's the only way by embolizing here the cutter or try to balloning but usually it's an issue. Undersizing also is an issue because you don't have enough, you know, undersized. So you have a lot of leak between the graft and the and the, uh, shiva and the chimneys. And the best way to treat them by coiling or putting an uh, onyx in, in the gutters. Uh, if the inadequate landing zone, if the device you get, um, you get, um, a type one A endoleak because you don't have good landing zone and then you have to expand your landing zone. I have to go higher, I am putting a fever or with another chimney and to the celiac, to the SMA and go higher. 
So you need to buy more uh, links in the healthy aorta. But again, I like the other classification is much better. How we deal with the endo with the leak? Again, most of the leak they go by themselves. As you saw, majority are very benign; they go by themselves. But if they persist, or they are like the one A or A one endo leak, then the best way, as you go between there, put a coils or put an onyx, and they work for just perfect. And now we use endo, even endo anchors. So what the solution? Again, the easy solution to reballooning by kissing balloon again, and most of the time this will solve most of your uh, issue. Some people use a large balloon expandable stent to give you a good seal. Uh, sometimes you have to go higher get, because your length is not enough. So you have to go higher by adding a chimney or you do a fever cuff. Uh, but most of the time, again, we can treat them by calling or liquid or uh, helifix. And again, open circular repair is an option if you got nowhere. But the majority, again, type 1 endoli kernel will disappear. Only small number will require, require the intervention. Okay, I'll share a couple of the cases. Um, this is a patient came with a large uh, juxtaria aneurysm, four millimeters. Let me see if it works. Yeah. So you can see big aneurysm, short neck. Uh, most people, again, guys, we go with a fee bar. But I don't remember what was the case. I think it was emergency or, or symptomatics. So you can see the neck is very short here, but we still have a neck. Again, you still have you need the neck. You cannot do a shivar without neck. You still need two millimeter neck. So I think we went there and we bought uh, a chimney and uh, we get a good result with a good seal. And this is follow up. One chimney was enough and this is follow up. Another patient again, very short neck, even narrow aorta. You can see even conical neck. And this one also with two Shiva to we need to go really higher and we get a nice outcome. Uh, this patient came with an endo leak. Uh, so we have to go higher. See the stent is in the good positions here. So we so that means this endo leak because of the short, you don't have a good healthier uh, neck. So you need to buy more neck, so you have to go higher. So we have to go to chimney, go a bit higher, and we get a good leak, a uh, good uh, ceiling zone. But this is Draco abdominal, but he he came, it, it's just like a pseudoneurism around the celiac and SMA, so with two chimney, celiac and SMA, and TVAR, and we get excellent explosions. So conclusion, she would be to be good addition to the endovascular option for juxtarian aortic aneurysm. Uh, it being proved to be safe, long and standing, parallel to custom device, but has the advantage of being off the shelf, can be used in emergencies. Durable outcome of three years, mean follow-up. Most study we have, even we have five years now. Uh, best result if you have one or two, two, one or two chimney, and the vessel should be more than five, four millimeters. If there's not four millimeters, this will not work. The chimney will occlude it. So you need at least four millimeter target vessels and try to get one or two chimney. The more you go in the chimney, you get to trouble. And you need to adhere to the steps and technique which I talk about it. I think that's all. Uh, I'll be glad to answer all your questions, guys. I'm sure you have a lot of questions. And uh, also Ali or any consultant with me here, if you have to add anything, I really appreciate that. Yeah, hello. Hakim, low and Andy uh we will deploy two two G bars, renals. Would you rather go for a sixteen fr of uh, or uh sixteen French one auxiliary or bilateral seven French uh brachial with the risk of a stroke on the right hand side? It's not high, but it's, the stroke is there. The stroke is there. The problem with the stroke is you know the outcome is very bad. It's not like an hernia or you know or lymphocytic can deal with it. Stroke is a devastating outcome. So you need to avoid, even if the, if the percentage maybe like 2% is still high. So it's better not to, to go through the, uh, the the right side. Even I saw sometimes stroke from the left side. So imagine from the right side. So I will not do that unless if you have a reason. Like even a left subclavian is occluded and I have to do a chimney, then I go from the right. But no, I prefer to go from the axilla 
and put two in the, in the left side and go one from the right, one from the left. Even though if you think about technically, it's easier to go from the right because it's in your same field because you are on the right side of the patient and right arms next to you. So you don't have to go around the table every time. So technically, it's really is easier and you know to go from the right side, but its chance of stroke is there. It's not high, it's small, but the problem of patient got it, I think is a disaster. What do you think, Ahmed, uh, Ali? Uh, you remember our uh, chimney case, no? I remember, yeah. It's about seven yeah. years now. Yeah, in a while. Yeah, and uh, we went uh, with two... Uh, right, right uh, and left. From the, from the left side, so... Right, sorry, from the left side, yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, any other questions? I mean, the major changes I see is that when they start chimney, they used a lot of Viaban, and now everyone get away from Viaban, you know. And if you have guys to use a Viaban because the link, I mean, before it was a problem because all covers stand, uh, balloon span covers stand, the longest they come like 59, which is sometimes short. You need the longer, especially if you do a truck abdominal. Uh, but now VBX, they come up to like 79, almost eight centimeters, so it's good. But if you have need a longer, then you can use a via band. But if you use a via band, it's very advisable to use a balloon self self expandable uncover stand inside the via band. So after you put a via band, you go inside and you put uncover balloon expandable covers, uncover balloon expandable stand inside the via band to give us strength because otherwise we'll compress it. There is one new product from Medtronic, Dr. Samer. It's called NGVAR with a radiant stand. I don't know if we have any data on this one. No, it's no data. It's very new, unfortunately, no. Yeah. I think the best way if you want to use, I mean, the most we use here, we don't use Coke much. And Coke is not good because it's stainless steel, it's stiff. So if you use a Chivar, I think you're going to end using either Gore or Medtronics. Um, if I use Gore, I prefer to use VBX with it. If I use Medtronic, I like V12. So again, using the right combination is very important. But the most important is the new seating zone should be at least 15 millimeters, really. You cannot compromise that. If you have less than like one centimeter, it's not enough. You have to get 15 uh, centimeters. And then if you're 15 centimeter, like, for, up to the celiac, if the, the the distance between the neck and the SMA is less than 15, then you have to go higher, then you have to go three chimney, then I will not advise that. Then better to go with the fever. Uh, so try to stack only to two chimneys. Especially now you can do a customized uh, fever. You can do like physician modified fever. Uh, any other question, guys? Any question about Awarta? Forget about uh, Shibar. Any question about Awarta? Because I think it's the last lecture about Awarta. Um, no. Okay, I think next week, maybe we'll go back to question. It's more interactive. I noticed that in the lectures, not much interactive, guys. Um, so maybe next week we go back to the case presentation or uh, visa review. And I think the request was for critical limb ischemia. So I'll, we'll, we'll talk about critical limb ischemia next once, but it will not be a lecture. It will be like, again, question review or uh, scenario review, guys, you run it. It will be more interaction, be more interesting, I think. Any Any questions? Thank, Hi, you. Doctor. Thank, Thank you, Dr. Uh, just right. one quick question. Yes, yes, please. Uh, just you were mentioning uh, the uh, the new uh, stents that uh, are that are used uh, with the Chiva. You're saying uh, now we have longer stents. So yes. uh, I, I was just wondering because uh, we have a case uh, with accessory renals. Have you used Chiva with accessory renals? And what's the length that uh, the maximum length that we can basically use use Chiva with it? I mean, you can accessory, depending how big is the accessory. If less than four millimeters, don't use it because it be useless, it'll be occluded. So you have to see how big is the accessory artery, renal. 
if it's... Uh, no, I don't mean the diameter. I mean the length of the stent. So you were saying uh, now we are we are using. No, I mean what we to... have now. We have we have. You need you don't need with a juxtarenal. You don't mean you don't need more than four or five centimeter, which is available. I mean, the longer stent, if you do it for thoracic abdominal, you know, but for juxtarenals, usually thirty nine or forty nine should be fine. Because okay. you need two centimeters inside the renals, and uh, new neck should be one and a half to two, so two or two and four, and one centimeter like between. So it's about like four to five centimeters would be enough for juxta renals. You don't need longer. But for the for the accessory, is a good question. If I see accessory renal artery, it's the problems. Uh, if it's less than four millimeter, uh, the other one is good. I just embolize it and depend on only one. Uh, so, so you don't, don't check the uh, you don't you don't don't do any injections into the to see how much it's giving the kidney. No, you can do from the CAT scan. You look at that, but what other option you have? I mean, it's less than it's like three millimeters or two millimeters. You get an infarction. Okay. You can yeah, you can do open. It's the best way. I'm talking always as again. Remember, we are a surgeon. I mean, if you get to the issue, there's no other than do an open. You know. Yes. Otherwise you can re-implant, but even if you re-implant like two millimeter artery, it's not going to work. So even in the open, it's not going to work. You see my point? Uh, yes. Sir. But with the re with the open, you may stay below the renal. You don't have to re-implant them. Even with a short neck, usually with a suture, you can get it. You know, just have to clump super renal and do it in for renals. So this is the advantage of an open. You can do it even with a very short neck with an open. Um, but but if you have less than four millimeters, I don't think even FIBA will work because if you have to put any cover, any stent inside two or three millimeters included. So then you, okay. you have to see how is important this artery. This is like small, or how is the other artery if it's big and this is small, just so forget about it. Yeah, uh, Dr. Sarah. Okay, thank you. Yes. Uh, for yes. embolizing the accessory, do you embolize it? Sorry? Uh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. For go ahead. embolizing. Uh, when when you are going to embolize the accessory renal, do you embolize it on the same setting or uh, on a separate day, like 24 hours before the uh, shivar? Well, I don't think it makes a difference. Uh, depending how's your setting and how your OR goes and what you expect the case to be smooth or long. I mean, it depends how the anatomy. If you expect the case to be difficult and challenging anatomy, then maybe I'll do it the day before. Uh, but if you think be straightforward, I just do the same time. It doesn't make a difference because there's no place here for collateral. If you think that's collateral, you know, this is an end artery. So it's not like you do it a week before you get good collaterals. No, it's an end artery. You're going to close it, close it. So I think it depends on the complexity of the case. I'll do it before or during the procedure. Dr. Samer, with this accessory, do we expect a benign course of type 2 endoleak? Or the, they just behave the same with, with a regular EVAR? No, I think it's better to embolize them. Don't leave them alone. Uh, because if you get an, because sometimes it's, we know it's an end artery, but sometimes you have collateral, so you get a retrograde flow. And you get retrograde flow, it is, it's hard to, to, to deal with it. So I think it's better to, to, de to, to, to coil it. Unless in coming is if, unless if it's coming from a straight part of the neck of the aneurysm where the graft will occlude this orifice, then you can leave it alone. But you have to be sure that the, the orifice is occluded either by graft or by coiling. But if it's coming from the aneurysm itself, then you have to coil it. Because otherwise you get your type two in the leak. Okay, Dr. Thomas, thank you for uh, this uh, nice lecture. Uh, if we want to move the graft. So to remove the chimney would be challenging to make an open surgery after one or two years. Moving the, this chimney, any tips or tricks to remove this chimney during the surgery? It's very good questions. Yeah, yes. Any by any time you put a cover stent, you know, even when you do an EVAR uh, inside the iliac, sometimes it's very hard to get out from the iliacs, you know. Um, so yes, could be a, a, a difficult. So in this way, you just cut it, you know, cut it, remove that, leave that as a, as a part, as a part inside, and you you just you know suture it to your you know most of you going doing like so you're going to reimplant it. So most of you do, you're doing throat abdominal, or you're going super renals, you know, repair or reimplanting the renals. 
I mean, you go, you can do gentle. Most of the time it comes easy. Yes. If you answer, yes. Most of the time it comes easy. But if you find it stuck and you cannot take it, just cut it and leave it inside. Because you, if you tear, the serene artery is very thin. If you tear it apart, it'll be a big, big problem. So I would try to remove it slowly, easy. If it comes easy, okay. But if it's any resistant, just leave it there. Cut it and re-implant the renal artery in your new graft. The same we do for the renal. If I pull the EVAR during extraction and find the EVAR stuck to the common iliac, I just cut it and leave it there. And then you're doing your anastomosis. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah, all right, I think it's all the question, guys. Um, we'll see you next Saturday. And again, most of it will be talking about critical limb ischemia. And hopefully it'll be more interesting. All right? Take care. Have a nice night, everyone. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Thank you.